Yeah. It's five o'clock, and we're going to call this meeting to order. Uh, <coughs> Councillor P. Voy, you will be uh, uh, giving our opening prayer. We would like to welcome the media, Corey McCarthy for Channel 32, and uh, Rene Sibon for Tempo Star. Thank you so much for doing that for us. So, Councillor P. Voy, go ahead. Dearest Father, we are grateful to Thee for the blessings of living in this wonderful town. We're grateful for the people we serve and the people we work with. We ask for Thy guidance always to be able to govern in a way pleasing to Thee through wisdom and prudence and transparency. We ask for such guidance in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, Amen. Thank you very much for that prayer. All right, so let's look at the uh, agenda. You may have just noticed there's a little bit of a typo there, so don't worry about it. There is not 15 items, there's really 13 items. So it's 11, 12, 13, that's the way it should be uh, numbered, okay? Uh, so that's a detail, we don't have to worry about it. So we need a motion to adopt the agenda. Okay. Councillor Barnes, move to adopt the agenda. We will, um, in a report, we just will talk about it. We don't need to add an addition? No. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. All in favor? All right. Thank you. We have uh, a delegation that's coming at 6 o'clock and another one at 6 10. So if you uh, want to go to number five, we are going to adopt the minutes of the regular council meeting of November 10th. Uh, I need a motion. Councillor Bantry moves to approve the minutes of November 10th. Yeah, 2014. Uh, any questions regarding those minutes? Just for your information, we had in a minute, uh, Councillor Bendry had asked that we sent a letter to Minister McQueen regarding the library. What we actually did for uh, clarity, we sent a copy to uh, the Chinook Arch, but we also wrote a specific letter C -C. to Chinook Arch, so to cover the whole spectrum, okay? All right, so all in favor? Thank you. Mayor, can I back you up? Okay, go ahead. Is it a delegation at uh, 6 p.m. or do we uh, adjourn for a public hearing? Public hearing. You, you are exactly correct. We will adjourn. The delegation will be Marion. She will be doing the public hearing for okay. us. Okay? All right. So now let's go to item 6, uh, business arising. There is a bylaw 1618, which is a traffic safety bylaw. What we need with this uh, bylaw is second and third reading. I just had one thought after reading this bylaw again. The thought that I had is there is nothing there that talks about the eventuality of somebody having five, six licensed car and where those cars should be parked. It seems to me that it would be wise if we could maybe discuss this issue so that if you have licensed car, if you have six of them, five, six, whatever you have, that they'll be on your property or on the front of your property so that they're not all over the street. Meaning in front of other people's homes. Correct. I think, I, I think Mayor, you're correct in the, in the thinking, but as long as they're licensed and registered, they can be parked on the street. At this point they are, but mm -hmm. we have an opportunity to I change don't know, this. I don't know if we do or not. I think we do. We can change the bylaw the mm -hmm. way it satisfies or needs. Well, they have to be moved. I mean, they can't leave them. They have, so to, have to be moved, moved every 15 days. days. Yeah. But to my point of view, I mean, 
the reason why I'm saying that, I come from a part in BC where really you can have your cars all over people's street. You really couldn't. Next street over. Yeah. Sorry, Your Worship. Um, we did check on the Delta um. bylaw today. I had Lloyd give them a call, and they have nothing in their bylaws. In fact, they did say that they wouldn't be able to implement that because it would be against the BC Traffic Safety Act. Yeah. Already, and so I asked Lloyd to make some phone calls and and find out what the implication would be with the Alberta Traffic Safety Act, but. We don't need to suffer. Okay. And, and, and I okay. think that's where Richard was going with that, with it being licensed. I don't know that we have a license and registered well, jurisdiction. Yeah, license is exactly the issue. They are licensed, but it seems to me when you start to park on the front of everybody, your car on the front of everybody's. But, but Councillor Creed hit it on the head when he said they have to be moved every 15 days or something. 15 like days, yeah. And if they go around the block and park it there, it's been moved okay. Well. As far as a right. policy change, we could we could lower that to say seven days just to keep things I don't know. moving. Well, I don't know. <coughs> but it doesn't change the issue. For me, it okay. was a number of cars that are of one yep. person that is all over the place. It doesn't seem right. But if you uh, wish not to touch it, it's fine. So what we need, we need a motion to adopt a second reading. I'll move uh, second reading. Okay, Councillor Balfour's move to uh, move second reading for uh, bylaw 1618, by known as traffic mm -hmm. safety bylaw. Any questions, um, Councillor Green? I have, have one. <coughs> I'm trying to scroll down to it, but uh, when I read through the bylaw last uh, uh, after first reading, we or we there were changes to be made. We, we we and most of those changes have been made. Uh, we eliminated the bun bags. Uh, and <laughs> but I did notice in the in the in the penalties there's still there's it was still uh, uh, a penalty attached to uh, horses depositing uh, solid waste on the uh, or on the on the on the roadway or on the pavement night so so that should go be taken out along with the bun bags I'm just trying to see if I can scroll down to find it but uh, it was. Uh, it should have, it should have been taken out along with say along with the removal of the clause. It's on the last page. Yeah, yeah it would it be on the very last, last, last so page. Yeah. If we, Madam Chairman, sorry, Good. if we could pass second reading of the bylaw yeah, and then the motion put third. forward to remove that from the penalty section, and then third reading. Just okay. So it's All right. Recorded appropriately. Okay. So uh, we have second reading on the table. All in favor of second reading. Thank you, Councillor Creed. Do you want to make that motion? Yes. To okay. No, I will. Item? I will. I will uh, move an amendment. I just see if I can find the item. Uh, the final page, third on the last third, page, yeah. fifth from the top. Uh, okay. Well, All right. Yeah. Waste, okay. Solid okay. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars deposit solid horse waste on the roadway. I will make a motion that that be we amend the bylaw by removing that particular item okay. from. Uh, the from, the bylaw. from the bylaw. Yeah. Question yeah. before we have third reading, yes. should we hold off on third reading until we get the results of your question to administration? No, I think it's fine. <coughs> so you're saying there's not going to be any charge of a horse deposits of waste on the road? Yeah, because well, we've, we've taken, we've, we've removed the, removed the clause about yeah. the bun bag, so right. you're going to get horse deposits on the roadway, mm -hmm. so uh, okay. we, we don't want to, we don't right. want to penalize them for that. Right. Luckily right. they're biodegradable. Yeah. Okay, so here we have a motion uh, for amending the bylaw by penalties. All in favor? Thank you. Now, I need I'll someone to move to the reading. Uh, I, and this is just for the sake of uh, clarity on this, I would almost recommend, and I can so move if, if after discussing or whatever, or maybe I move first, but in Schedule A, just for simplicity, I'd love to see that broken down like we recommended on the other mm -hmm. appendix so that infractions had a classification, this is a class A violation, class B, and then down at the bottom just say, hey, a class A is 30 bucks, a class B is 50. And well, it seems like- the 25. Yeah, it, that way it, it just, I don't know, for me that just helps put things in perspective. People say, hey, you know, this is worse than that, and that makes sense, versus right now it's just a bunch of numbers. Uh, just for clarity, it wouldn't change the content, it was just bump all the dollar amounts down into a A, B, C, and D, 
and then each of these infractions would have a classification. Minion, uh, what do you need to regarding this there, type of... You uh, could just put a motion forward to classify the fines, and then we would... Do the simplify. Way. And then we would pass yeah, the motion. Okay, so all right. I, I, got a, I, got, I still have a concern over playing games in the street. For my, when I see this, I see you trying to get rid of road hockey and basketball on the streets, or, I mean... No, what we're trying to do, Councillor, as far as I'm concerned, is we're trying to protect our citizens so that they don't get run over when they're in the street. Oh, for goodness sakes. <laughs> I'm still here. I played games for 20 years on the streets. <laughs> the car come along, you just haul her car and you move off the street. That's what you did 20 years ago. Well, I, I don't care. You know you're something. Still, you still do. No, I, I'm discussing. I'm still, I'm still concerned. And any given night, you can watch TV and see a commercial about kids having a fun time playing hockey and adults out there playing hockey on the road. I, I just I just don't like the idea of getting so intrusive in person's life that you have to worry about every little thing they do to keep them safe. Kids have got ways to look after themselves too. I, I just, I don't like it okay. at all. I really don't. So that the only trouble is if you don't have a proper bylaw, if a child were to be killed, God forbid, by a car, Come and we back. don't have a proper bylaw, you will be responsible for the it. The town? Why would the be town be liable? Because you don't world. have the right bylaw to protect your citizens, which you as a councillor have said you would do. As a councillor. I don't know. Yeah. So, just, just to comment, yes, I, I, I understand what you're saying because I you totally know, understand. It, it's nice for kids, but I think you have to, you know, and it's 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 up to the bylaw officer, in, in a way, how he enforces that. But you have to, ha if you don't have a bylaw in place, uh, you know, it could get out of hand, and he would have no recourse. Yeah. And, and so this gives him a recourse if 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 they are causing a, you know, traffic obstruction. Uh, it's in the bylaw. He has the he has the ability to. Uh, if, you know, if they're not causing any problem, kids are out there and they're ver and they're very considerate and they move out of the way. Um, I don't think Lloyd would bother them. And, I, and that's that's my big concern. I don't want to see anybody down there strong or kids. But, but if you know if if, if if there's kids out there and they're and they're not paying attention to cars and they're they're being a nuisance. And then the bylaw gives the the, the bylaws or the authority to yeah. to do something, and that's that's why I feel like that's it, it's okay. I think we also, uh, Councillor Creedy, we also directed the administration to look at Parks and Recreation of uh, putting a cement pad in in the tot lots. Yeah, for yeah, that kind of a purpose, and maybe a cement pad on the on the town square somewhere, where where if they've got a you know a purpose, mm -hmm. a place to do that. Then, then uh, our bylaw officer could direct them over to the tot lot and such and such to the they road like over there. Yeah, to there's game over there. Can, yeah. yeah, I mean it's not going to totally eliminate it. I'm, no. I'm sure there's going to be still some. And I, and I think, like in a cul de sac. I, I'll tell you right now. I hope it doesn't eliminate it. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I think our bylaw officer is very uh, astute <laughs> to the idea that he's, well, he is. You know, he's he's not going to be cracking the whip and everything like you that. You know, like I've seen kids playing in a cul-de-sac and, and, and it, it, it's pretty you know, low traffic situation and, and if it, like say, if it's not causing a problem, I don't think it would right. bother them. Thank you. Perhaps. I think there was, uh, it's a good discussion. <coughs> kids, we don't want them to stop having fun, but we want them to have safe fun. That's about what we're looking for. Uh, the purpose of this is to provide protection to the town, I can see what you're saying. But, yeah. but I just don't want our bylaw guy going there strong arming no, kids and you know, throwing out thirty dollar fines to little six, seven, eight year old kids for out there having fun. Yeah, no, and I hear you. But they need to also understand the importance of safety and the danger there is on the street, right? Okay, Councillor Pevoy, you wanted to make uh, an amendment. Yes, I uh, move to amend Schedule A to include classifications for simplicity. And uh, if the scale could be increasing from so that everybody knows 30, the lower infractions yeah. will cost less <coughs> and the higher infractions right. more. Just group them by, group them by, 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 penalty, by, penalty, amount. by penalty amount. Yeah, by penalty amount. 
Okay. I've, right. I've got one other <coughs> thing for you on there. Can, can I <coughs> second? Just want to make sure that Graham got it. Graham, do you, did you get that motion? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, discussion? Well, questions? Yeah. Um, the, the very first one under Schedule A, the vehicle with lugs or cleats. Is our province got a law against uh, studded tires? No. No. And so isn't that Probably making our own rules? Those lugs or cleats are not. That was the same tires. as studded what are you, tires. Well, what are you talking about lugs then? I, so yeah. I'd like to like know on a caterpillar tractor, like a tread. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, treads. You know, like the long chains. Yeah, the yeah. chains. Yeah. And not even chains. It would be, well, it would be well, the, the track. The, the track. tracks. tracks. You know, tracks. Okay, the gotcha. You know, okay. Especially the metal lugs. I mean, it wouldn't, wouldn't apply probably to a, a yeah. rubber. There, there are some rubber tracks that, that it wouldn't apply to. Yeah. Them, apply to metal well, maybe, maybe you should put lugs. that on there, uh, make an amendment on their vehicle with metal lugs or cleats. Because, like I said, there, uh, I look at some of the construction companies around here that have got the rubberized. Yeah, the rubber tracks. The rubberized uh, tracks on them, and they're certainly, I mean, they're going to make some skid marks. I don't they're think, not going I don't to think that would be considered. I like, think, I, this is just my thought on that, I think this is just an abbreviation of uh, something explained earlier. The details are up in the policy. Yeah. This is they just are. showing the fine for that would be right. here. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Okay. We're referencing that. Okay, so we have a motion here, and to uh, have a schedule A uh, reformatted. And all in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I'll move, so I'll move third reading for bylaw 1618, Public Safety Traffic Act. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor Bentley. All right. Any questions? If seeing none, let's uh, go to a vote. I just. Uh, sorry, I'm just. If you have a question, yeah. go ahead, Councillor Bentley. The specific. Help me find that paragraph with the sports. What uh, what's the section number on that one? Sports in the road. Oh, oh. sorry. Uh, section it is. Did I just had it here a second ago. What I'm wondering uh, while we're looking for it, what I'm wondering is if there's not a way to write into the policy the intent of because it sounds like the intent of this entire council is that you know such be available where reasonable you know and then if we could just put in maybe a softening word. That would say, hey, you know, the bylaw officer has the discretion to, or to judge. If obstructing I, traffic, I, I don't know that something. you can put into a bylaw no. that there's the discretion. Well, the problem is, yeah, yes, the problem yes. is, you know, because then it looks like there's bias. And it would be nice for him to say, look, I'm not picking on you because, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're short. I'm picking on you because <laughs> you violated this part of the bylaw, you know, or I whatever. Don't <laughs> what are you looking at, Councilor Parkinson? I don't read it. I'll remember that <laughs> for, for no okay. reason. Councilor, I already think it's section 8.02. 8.02. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, the, the wording there is pretty strong, and I'm wondering if maybe if you could put. Uh, so you know, so as to obstruct, you know, gains and roads, so the causing traffic obstruction, or uh, if yeah, a comes. Because I thought of that at one time. No person shall obstruct traffic by playing games you on know, the road. Uh, we we have revisited this now about four times. Well, I think we have to come to really a finalized version of it. So, if you can find a better wording. Let's get a better wording and let's try to <coughs> move along with that because well, I, I, I think I, the best discussion is when we have those yeah, valor and bring all those items forward so that when it's time to pass and we can pass them. And I think we need to reali realize that our bylaw officer has got a lot of discretion. I mean, he's going to use he discretion. He uses a lot of Absolutely. discretion already. And I, and I think we need to leave it, do the bylaws. Get it done up to to where it is now. Stop changing and changing and changing, but lose it. <coughs> leave it up to our bylaw officer to to use his discretion on, on how far he takes it. Personally, that's the way I would prefer to see it. Well, my my my, my, my thoughts on that is whenever you're um, writing laws. Uh, you have to consider that there, you may not have the same bylaw officer. <laughs> You know, all the time you have to consider somebody like, like uh, Dennis was saying, somebody that, that may have a different attitude. Yeah. 
and so you know you have to you have to kind of take those things into consideration yeah and yeah so, but uh, it would have been nice if we had brought all that when we had those bylaws coming forward because that has not changed from the past full time we had it we have to become a little bit efficient i think we ha we also have to rely on our administration uh, the individual that's over the bylaw officer <coughs> uh, there's going to be some counseling done there you know uh, there's going to be some direction given if, if it's needed and so I think we should just leave it as it is. I, I still want to say I, I, 802. Councillor, how you're, would you like to see it written? Well, I, I'd like to somehow word it so that, that would the, you sit they're, not, they're not obstructing traffic yeah. while they're playing the game. I so, think that would be good. You know? Right. So uh, would you like to so as move it? No person shall play any game on any road or lane. So as to so as so to traffic. traffic. That would, perfect. That would, that would be would perfect. That, that would that that work that would, for you? That would be very okay. good for me. Yeah. So would That's you like good. to uh, propose put that? I would like to propose an amendment, an amendment that okay. uh, section 8.02 read as follows, that no person shall play any games <coughs> on any roadway or lane that would obstruct traffic vehicular traffic okay so that's fair <coughs> enough uh, we're going to vote on the amendment all in favor okay thank you uh, opposed thank you uh, we now need to because any game you're playing on the on the on the road it's going to drop tra traffic if there is traffic. Uh, if, there if there is, is traffic. Traffic. If there's any traffic there won't. No. Yeah. okay <laughs> so uh, I, th now, I think it's sort of a mute Okay, we need to now adopt the third reading as amended. Council Bangry had a motion on the table. Yeah. Oh. Which was the third reading. The third, third reading. reading. Yeah. yeah. So as amended. Uh Councillor Bangry, do you want to kinda of tweak it and say as amended? No. Uh, it doesn't need to be no. as amended. It's you don't need to, you can do it as such. Yeah. Okay, because we have the amendment. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, all in favor? Thank you. Wow. <coughs> so we have a dog bylaw uh, 1625. This uh, bylaw 1625 has now had the penalty put in category from a least to most offensive. What we need to really look at, if you look at the list, uh, the, the level of offenses, <coughs> level A offenses, is still fairly high for mm -hmm. a first time offense. Is it the intent of this council to keep first offense as high as they are, which are $200 for a first time offense? Is this the intention of council to keep it that way? Councillor Peaboy? Yeah, I, I think last time when we were discussing this, it was mentioned uh, by a couple of councillors that right now, by the time you're paying that first offense, <laughs> you've been warned a couple of times. And that's been, you know, our policy, that's right? So this technically, your first offense would be closer to your third in many cases. Okay. All right, so I understand your reasoning. Any, anybody else would like to speak to that? Marian? Madam Chairman, just for clarification on the bylaw then, would you like to include a first offense as a warning? So that, because there's an assumption That's being made. Right? Yeah. But I think the conversation earlier was about right. if right. someone wants to hold to the letter of the law, these are the offenses, right? right. So yeah. So if the intent of counsel is that the first offense is a warning, then it should be written into the bylaw. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I, the just, first yeah, offense is so a $200 fine. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor uh, Bell. With, with that, like I, I look at the you know the first one that's listed here, you know, failing to obtain a dog tag. Uh, somebody that just buys a dog, a dog tag's what, $50? And no, it's not is, is it even that much? $25. My wife pays that stuff. I don't <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they, they forget to to get a dog tag yeah. and get a $200 fine for that, that's, yeah. that would seem a little excessive mm -hmm. to me. 
Yeah. Okay. So here is a proposal, Councillor Pivoy. Well, yeah, I, what would you like to see? So, and I'm okay with with warnings. The the only thing sometimes, depending on the severity, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. maybe the level C, level D offenses, mm -hmm. where you don't want to give them a warning when there's a guy in the hospital. You yeah. know. Okay. Like, you know. But he will talking level A offenses. Mm -hmm. So at the level A, would you like to first to see the first way for the bylaw officer is to to warn. A warning. Yes. Second, second warning is really a, what is called key first offense, and so on. Would it work for you? That would that would work for me. Okay, uh, Councilor Bandry, can we you, then? Thank you. Everybody yeah, is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Marion, do you want a motion regarding this, Councilor uh, Balfus? Would you like to? Sure. Uh, I'll move that uh, we add a first offense as being a warning, and then uh, the, for the future offenses, just move them all down on to level A. Third and on, on level, level, on level, on level A, a only. On level A offenses. Would that work? Okay. Graham, do you have That's that the, motion? The so any of the two okay. Okay. Is that yeah. level A offenses in Schedule A of Bylaw 1625, the dog bylaw, be amended to include first offense as a warning, and the second, third, and fourth. As to second, correct. yes, yeah. as uh, in schedule. Mm -hmm. So, all in favor? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, we now could move a second reading of this bylaw, Councillor Pivoy. I got another question first. Uh, go, go ahead, ahead Councillor. <laughs> on, on this level B, who is determined? Have we determined yet who the no nuisance dog is? Yeah, if you really yeah, look at the whole bylaw, the whole definition, the description yeah. is there. Yeah. An intervention at level C is with the administration. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So having this, Councillor Van Green. Uh, P boy. Oh, yes. P boy. I'm <laughs> so sorry. No problem. Now I'm starting to see double. <laughs> We're all starting to look alike here. Uh, <laughs> I'll move second reading on bylaw 1625, the uh, dog, dog bylaw. Thank you. She was confused because we forgot to put your name plate. Oh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, any questions? Councillor Creed? Uh, 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 a couple of que one question and one comment. Uh, the question is, I'm just I can find this spot, but on the appeals when I was reading it, uh, I was just wondering if it's best practices to have to appeal. Like this was appealing, you know, for for a, a, for a yeah, if, dog. If number there is, six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Uh, and and the appeal was to the to the chief administrative officer. Right. Yeah. But it was also the chief administrative officer that was the one that would designate. A new dog. dog. And I'm just wondering right. if the best practice is to have the appeal to the same person who makes the yeah, decision as well as you in the yeah. in the in the first place. And yeah, that yeah. was that was my question. And I know, you know, legally it might be okay, but I'm just wondering if that's best practice is to have have the appeal to the same person no, who I makes the decision. Yeah. Uh, Maybe yeah. we would let administration uh, reply yeah, to like this. to change that that they appeal to council, then we can. That Ooh, would be a motion, uh, and we'll just amend the bylaw accordingly. I think I think appealing to the person that gets it is keeps a continuity. Well, they know what's happening. But sometimes, sometimes you know, in, in most things where you have an appeal board, the appeal board isn't the same person. Who, the, the idea is that for it to be separate, yes, so you're not trying to convince somebody that's already made their mind. Already made do we want to wrap this? Do we do we want to wrap this council up with dealing with bylaws? With dogs? Yeah. Well, I think there's two parts to that. One is is that there's not that many dogs that ever get designated a nuisance dog. And two, it sure would make the person question about the, whether they're going to appeal or not when it has to come to a public hearing to council. appeal to council. Yeah. Okay. So how many of you would prefer to see a change to council? Uh, as an appeal. I think so. I think I would. Okay, all right. It appears, uh, Marianne, that uh, we want to change <coughs> the... Um, <coughs> we need a motion to yeah. change first, it. First of all, procedurally, you have a motion on the table for we second need to reading. To vote. You need to deal with that motion, and then you can put a further motion <coughs> for the vote. Yes, uh, thank you for reminding me of the order. Okay, so we need to move 
Second reading, somebody has already yeah. done it? Yes, a few voices. Okay, Confirm. all right, so we need to vote on that uh, second reading. All in favor? Okay, so now we need a motion. So, Councilor so, Creed. So I will make a motion that on, on the, the appeal for uh, uh, the designation of aggressive dog, that the, the, the appeal be made to the council be the body that they would appeal to. Okay. Uh, and I would also just like to make a recommendation besides that, that since uh, when we did uh, first reading in our council meeting, we had no media here basically to, that, uh, that we, uh, and since the fines in this bylaw are significantly higher, that we uh, stop with second reading on this bylaw and then we, we wait to the next council meeting for third reading. That's the recommendation. So okay. To the my, my motion is, is that we uh, the appeal to council. Okay, so <coughs> your motion is strictly to appeal, appeal to, council. to council. Okay, so. Question. So on that, I, I just, I think I'd, personally I'd like to hear any additional options that we have. We've got the CAO <coughs> taking care of appeals on our own decisions as one option. The council doing those appeals uh, instead. I, I Personally, I think I'd favor a third option. Um, which would be which would I'm not sure. Or, you know, Leonard, you know, Leonard's good. No. So, so, so here, here would be my concern there is... If you designated an employee of who right. the CAO was overseas, of, right. yeah, you've got a, a built-in conflict there too, and I don't think that's a good idea. No, I was casually mentioning to Richard maybe a, a volunteer committee of citizens, maybe. I, I, how, if I might, Madam Chairman, how do you put a citizen in that position? Yeah. You're elected as council to deal with no. we have civic to, yeah, duties, yeah, I guess, guess and it puts them in a very difficult yeah. situation. Yeah, it's yeah. basically yeah. the neighbors. And yeah. Yeah. Councilor Bank, yeah. as, as I Bill and I just sort of briefly discussed it back and forth. I'd like to see you as mayor uh, set up uh, um, a member committee, a head committee. to, re head to head review committee. Okay. policies and procedures well, and, and then once that review is done to bring them to council for our acceptance or, or whatever. Appeals. I mean uh, appeals yeah. and because we waste a lot of time as a whole council yeah. dealing with bylaws, and I think we should have a separate uh, committee of council that deals with with bylaws, and then make their recommendations and bring that to at the, the CCW at meeting. the CCW. Okay, meeting. you know what? That's a government issue at this point, so we I don't know if we uh, can deal with it right now as we are in the middle of this, but it's a point that is an interesting point. Um, you could defer this to a committee. Well, we've already we deferred the third. Uh, with, a, with a, a third reading, so we could... Well, we, we, we haven't yet, have but, but right. I'm just suggesting that we do. But, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the motion is to appeal to a council. Uh, with that motion, does that uh, designate how the council has to deal with it? That it has to be with the whole council, or if it has to be, you know, a designated committee of the council? Would that... Would that uh, be, have to be specific in the motion. I'd say it doesn't mean. Or, or, or if we if we say that the council. Okay. Well, this then. isn't something that you're going to be dealing with on a monthly basis. No, no. It no, might no, happen yeah. once every five years. Yeah. I don't know why you'd want to form a committee to deal with something that might happen on a rare occasion. That's that would be my take on it. But Mayor, at the same time, how many how many time reviews have we done on all of our policies? Okay. Well, uh, that bit, that's a, no, issue. <laughs> yeah. that's a, that's a little bit of a governance issue. issue at this point. Can we finish doing that, Councillor Bangri? And bet. then we will maybe, yeah. maybe on the question, you may want to bring that up. Okay. Okay. Yes. One quick question uh, for administration. In the event of an appeal, uh, is this a situation where they would have already paid the fine and now they're appealing to get it reimbursed or? This is on the designation of, of, a, of a dog as a dangerous dog. That's where I read the appeal. Right. Yes, Sorry, that's yeah. what and, it is. and whether you know that they so the would appeal with dangerous whether, or nuisance or well, both. Yeah, well, yeah. Or either. Yeah. The reason I ask, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at time frames. If if right. instead it said, you know, the the, the appeal, the designated designation or order to a committee of council and then we can decide at that point if we want it to be committee of the whole no if you if you say to council we can then decide if mayor wants to have a ad hoc committee sure can do it 
It's simple. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it to inside well, that. If I might, Madam Chairman, I think yeah. you're complicating a fairly simple issue here. Um, if a dog is designated as a nuisance dog, aggressive dog, or been ordered to be euthanized, they can appeal my decision to counsel. Yeah. And that's good yeah. enough. Period. The, the citizens have a right to appeal decisions of administration to counsel on a fairly regular basis. Mm. You don't see it happening much, mm. right? right. Um, so I think we I, I think you're this, okay so. to leave it just to counsel. I think the so. thing is I'm not if I have an appeal, we would we're not gonna deal with it until a decision of counsel is made on the appeal. So I'm not gonna euthanize a dog if they've okay. appealed my decision exactly. to have the dog euthanized, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> okay. yeah. it there needs to be a timely uh, dealing, dealing with, with some of these okay. issues as well. Mm -hmm. uh, right? uh, I agree. I was that, Marianne, thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilor Creed, I'm just wondering if your concern is to have the citizen be made aware of the fine level because they're so different. I'm wondering oh, if... Oh, my recommendation? Yes. Oh. I'm just wondering if what we need to direct administration to do is to make sure that the dog owners know of that policy have that policy delivered in their mailbox or at their homes, but make sure that there has been a proper education of the people who have dogs. And if that is something that council wishes, I think it's a good idea to make sure that the administration has something in place to let people know where dogs owners. Is that something administration can do in a fairly easy manner? Yeah, what I would suggest, the, first of all, again, we're gonna, I'm going to just mention procedurally here. You have a motion on the table for an amendment to the bylaws, so right. that should be dealt with. And then with the it? separate yeah. issue yeah. of how we yeah. notify prior to third reading. Okay. All right. Can so we have him read the amendment again? Oh, okay. Uh, Great uh, amendment. This would maybe be just six. Just ask Grant to read it back to you. Do you have it? Moved by Councillor Creed that Section 6 of Bylaw 1625 Dog Bylaw regarding an appeal to the aggressive dog, nuisance dog, or euthanization of dog uh, be amended to have appeals go to Council instead of back to the CA. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, all in favor? Okay. So, this passed. Now we need to deal with the uh, issue of communicating the fines to admi through administration to the owners. So I was just going to inquire as to how many dog licenses do we have roughly and then maybe cost to mail out to each of them, rough estimate. Fun intended. What I would suggest, Madam Chairman, is that we send a notice out on the proposed bylaw to every current dog tag owner, um, and that we advertise it in the local paper, Chapter 32, all of those. The as website. Well. I think it's important to send it to those who currently have dog tags. Yeah. Um, I think we have about 200 <coughs> yeah. rough numbers um, on an annual basis. So right. That uh, times whatever a stamp and envelope is now. Okay. I think that would probably cover what that, you oh, yeah, have for concerns. Just, just transparency now, right. that's my concern. Okay. Question so, over here with Council Edmonds. Council Edmonds? Is this something we could hand out when they get the new license, which they're going to do in January? Uh, when we send out their renewal notice, we would put it in with yeah. that as well, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So. But I think our intention would be to have it passed. Do we want to do that? Yes. They're reading that. Well, I, d I don't know that it's necessary to defer it personally. If if we do the proper advertising, advertisement and a proper uh, contact with the dog owner, I think we would have done due diligence to that bylaw. Maybe notify them of, of the date the council attends intends to you know Pastor vote Green. on this no, on such and such so date. I was yeah. just going to suggest that that yeah. perhaps you set a date for third reading of December fourteenth, uh, the second meeting in January. Yeah, well, January, and that way you get feed 
you feel allow that? for time okay. for feedback right. if people feel that the fines are... How many meetings did you say we're having? Just, just two. two. Just, just one, well, committee of the whole committee council. Committee of the whole council. Okay. One council. All right. Council. So okay. I need a motion to postpone third reading and with a special date. No. I don't think no. you need it. No, we don't need a motion for that. We just said it. We just, we just don't don't pass. We just we, we just, just don't instruct, okay. right. pass okay, good enough. instruct administration to bring that up. For We're going to get it right yet. January. Yes, yeah. January. Yeah. January. Yeah. Thank you. No, I would suggest it's your second council meeting in January, second which council. allows people time to renew their the licenses, get no, the information, no, provide feedback to council no, prior to that, the third Talk in the second nine, meeting of the month. Four, the committee to hold first and then the, the council, second council meeting. meeting. Correct. The fourth so Tuesday. The fourth. Oh, the fourth, fourth Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. Okay, so, so that would be the end of the end of January. Mm -hmm. The end of January end would of January. be the last meeting in January yeah, right. of council. It would be the, would be the third seven. reading of uh, bylaw sixteen twenty five. Yeah, right. January twenty seventh. Known as the bylaw, and that is the way we will proceed. Then, thank you, thank you all for all your input. So that would be on the twentieth. I think twenty seventh. Okay. Twenty seventh. Yeah, for the twenty seventh. You're right. Okay. Um, could we look at six uh, C? That is really for your own information. Uh, that was a remuneration remuneration policy that had been set up uh, in by former council, and as you can see, it has an increase uh, in there. Uh, over the next three years. Okay? Now, let's try to go to uh, item 7. 7A, we cannot touch until we have a public hearing. We will have to do that after the public hearing. 7B, uh, we need to know, is Brownlee emerging, emerging, emerging trends? Trend 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 Sorry. And it's in Calgary, it's in February. What we need to know is who is interested to go. That is always something that I enjoy personally. It gives us a sense of what's going on and where we should be more cautious <coughs> in our job as councillors. Yeah. Yeah, okay, Councillor Bandry, Councillor Barnes, Councillor Peavoy, Councillor Balfour. I would go Councillor uh, Edmonds. Are you um, able to I, do it? I, 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 so sure. my, my thoughts, I was there last year and, it, and, and I did enjoy it, but uh, I'm just thinking of the cost of everybody okay. going. If, if, if some people were to go and report back, yeah. uh, you know, if everybody else is going, uh, nobody will report to me, Council. I'll go. Councillor, <laughs> it's, it's an important point what you say. Uh, what I wanted to tell you is that we all have an education uh, budget mm -hmm. that has been set aside for us while we are in a position of council and that that budget is there for you to get the information and education you need to do your job at the best of your and ability. This is an educational thing. So well, if you wish uh, to go, it's not mandatory mm -hmm. up to now. I need to know though for registration, so right. yeah. So, so so far, everybody. Yeah. Are you in? Well, yeah. Like I say, if everybody else is yeah. going, yeah, I might as, okay. as well go. I uh, have to make sure you, I go back you, to Lethbridge. It's uh, it's on a Thursday, so I have to. Uh, I'll have to take like, my car. Oh, like we did last year, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I after my. Uh, <laughs> You've done that before. Yeah, the hustle. So do you okay. have your meeting every Thursday? Every Thursday is our pathway. The rest of his life. All right. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's my mission anyway. Uh. <laughs> That's good enough. You don't need a motion for that, Marion. You don't need a motion for that. Thank you. Seven C, uh, the mural project. What we need here is a motion, but that would be a motion to allow, in principle, uh, for the civic center to be used for a mural uh, subject to. The budget approval. That's really the way it should be, should be worded. So, oh, committee I, yes, room I, I, is I, something. I, I, I put forth the proposal. I guess I will make the motion on that. I have something, <laughs> I have something like this. So yeah. If okay. You want to see if it works at all. That that Hello. looks great. So I would I would like to make a motion that uh, 
that we uh, approve the Civic Center to be used for, for uh, the subject of a mural in principle, uh, subject to uh, budget and uh, your approval of the specific mural. You know, when that and the availability of funds. Availability, yes. Yeah, so if, if, budget. Budget. If, if and when the mural project moves ahead, that the Civic Center be approved as a site. Yeah. Right. Thank you. So, uh, any questions? Uh, so just clarifying, is it still the intention of the 2015 budget to do the Civic Center exterior? We, the stucco. Stucco? Uh, yes, we do that. So we would take that into consideration. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and where would this mural be placed? Well, that would, that would be a It'd be on consideration the wall. <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> Communities in blue. Yeah, community in Bloom. So I mean, that, 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 that probably needs to be determined. I, I guess the motion basically just to use the building. We, you know, we would have to determine whether it would be more effective on the front of the building, on the north side of the building, or you know, I, think, I, think, I think that would be a corporate sponsor a consideration. A pioneer, a Subway sandwich, or something. <laughs> All in. Okay, please. Thank you. Council approved the use of the Civic Center's outdoor walls for the mural project subject to project funding. Yes. And, yeah, approved. Yeah, yeah that's right. Mm -hmm. So, all in favor? Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> all right. The 7D, it just need to fix the issue that is uh, addressed there. We simply need to have administration sent to direct administration to send a letter to the Carrier Charles Theater uh, to clarify that the advertisement can be done uh, per um, recogni uh, recognition of the town as a donor. It's all what needs to be done, nothing else. So The funds already have been approved. We already had a motion. The funds are sent. The funds already have the, the, the check was cashed. It's just a matter of uh, clarification. That's all what it is. So if you're all in favor of this, just all a, what we do will. Just a quick question. So my understanding with the advertising was that we would use the theater to get word out on issues. Is that still the intention? To okay. use it for at public, this, public at, notification? No. At this no. point, the whole intent of the donation through the ECDEV budget was to help with the dark uh, digital, digital dark di digital dark project. So they need to have it recognized as a donation in order to be able to Rather match just their the match their grant, right? So, can, uh, Jeff, do you I, want to talk? I just think it's important just to recognize the previous motion of council was that this money was used specifically to advertise for the town. That it was not a donation. In fact, the motion right. was very specific. Yeah. But it was. Right. So no, it was. Well, it was a word donation. It's, but it was subject that the Carriage House Theater provided yeah. advertising for right. the town. Yeah. The right. issue, the, the issue there, really, technically, if you do a donation, there's no strings, be no strings attached. That's right. That's the intent of a donation. But we attached it. So we attached it, so that it wasn't yeah. just exactly. a donation. Yeah. And that sense is no longer a donation. So, uh, if I may, so is there a problem then with their grant because we didn't do it as a donation and they need matching funds no. or something? It's, it's simply so it's okay that it's advertising yeah. money. Right. We will have right. will be advertised, recognized as the a donor. donor. Mayor, there's a, not, there's not a genesis for the this issue that these councillors aren't aware of. Okay, please go ahead. No, I, it's not my issue. <laughs> Apparently, she's there was to a, a lawn has talked to a couple councillors and took exception to how we've dealt with this. I haven't talked to her about that. Yeah. Which okay. councillor did a lot of Me. Talk to? <laughs> 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 that was here, okay. Speak up, Kate. When I read the when I read the motion back in August, it specifically says that it's a donation. And then there's an addition on there that there would be some in-kind advertising as a result. But in the true spirit of a donation, you can't st attach strings to it. Mm -hmm. And so it needs to be a donation. And my feelings were that as a uh, supporter of our local theater, 
that we should just leave it at that as a donation. And then they can do what they need to do with that money. It went towards that digital and dark. And I didn't have a problem with that as long as it was a donation. But when you start putting strings on it, it's not a donation anymore. You're purchasing advertising then. That's right. And they can't put it up there. We couldn't recognize the town as a donor. That's correct. Council, okay. Council, uh, and so council, I just wanted to get that sorry. cleared up. Thank you. I think you can put strings on a donation. The Historical Society receives donations all the time which are specifically donated for repairs to the building. It's not just a donation. It's specifically for those repairs. If, if we look at the the way we did the original uh, motion on this, that we were taking it from a tourism marketing account. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's, what's that's the idea. why it was de designated as advertising. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's specific. To I don't have a problem with us calling it a donation and not putting any strings associated to it. Yeah. But the motion that we passed had strings and, and said yeah. specifically that it was for advertising. Okay. The, the thing is, advertising can also, the, the minute you have your name on a poster of donors, you advertise. That's an advertisement too. Mm -hmm. You can become technical, but really, yeah. it is as such. Uh, my, so, my understanding, though, of the intent of the advertising was that we would use it to get word out about public events. And yes, that was my understanding. That was my understanding okay. when I voted on that. That was so. the original intent, except the difficulty that the theater faces is that if we purchase advertising with that thousand dollars, they can't not use it as a donation towards the project that this was intended to be. So this is where the So is. So the, to, clear, to clear this up then. Well, what we need to say. We, we just need a motion to say that it's a donation and, and let's send them a letter saying it's a donation. Is that we we don't even need a motion. We have a motion. The motion is fine. Really? Because that's really not the way I read the motion. All what we need to do is, is uh, direct administration to send a letter to advise uh, the theater that uh, if advertisement can be a way of uh, having your name on the donor list. Um, if council it? considers advertising having your name listed on the donor list, then it's and, fine. And how sure. we're advertising that way, then the motion is okay. But okay. The, yeah. the intent of the motion, I believe, was exactly as Council Barkas said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were purchasing advertising right. to, mm -hmm. and Councilor yeah. Peabody as well. Yeah. That but the yeah, idea specific mm -hmm. things, but if that's that's to the way we as administration yeah. address the and this kind yeah. of yeah, I, mean, I, I I think I may I may have even been the one that made the, the motion at the time. Uh, and my feeling then and, and I think now is that you know the thousand dollars is the thousand dollars I mean and, and they can use it for whatever purpose they want and and you know for them to provide you know a little advertising really is a no cost item to them and it, and it really was to go towards the, the digital dark and the issue is just whether we get recognized as a donor or not and if that's a big issue for the council no, you know it's not for the council it's for them <laughs> then. It's for them they have certain parameters yeah. as well. So, so, so it comes back to us. Is it a big issue for us yes. whether or not we're recognized which way is down? Down. So to if it's not, let's just say it's, it's a, a donation, donation and let's be done with it that it's a donation. Yeah. That's so so that's exactly. Okay. Well, this is why I said as direct uh, administration to write a letter and to clarify the issue. So yes. again, just going back to, I think the reason we did it the way we did it is because we didn't want to have this haunt us later, having set a precedent of donations to this charity or that charity within town, and this nonprofit, that okay. nonprofit. Counts so Councilor, can I just maybe revise that? If I'm correct, the way the motion is, the money is coming still from EGDEV, not from a donation funding. That money <coughs> comes from EGDEV. Yeah. Tur tourism yeah. marketing budget. Right. Mm -hmm. So that is not coming out of the donation bill, uh, budget, okay? So if we leave the motion the way it is, the only thing that needs to be clarified is what we understand by advertising. 
and advertising in our original frame of mind was true advertising for event, etc. The way it's changing at this point is that the advertising at this point become recognition as a donor. And that helped them to put that thousand dollar in their books against the grant uh, as a matching uh, funding for their grant. Otherwise, they have to put it as a revenue stream, which does not help them with the intent, which was to purchase that new digital camera. Okay. Is that clear? So, so, so. Or what okay. we need to do is direct. So you're saying for, 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 for them, see, and this is where it's maybe I was mistaken, because for right. them, for them, if they can't, if they can't use this to match, so I cannot match the grant. Match a then, 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 then I would be in favor of okay. changing the designation so right. that. Uh, right now, if right now if we tell them to put our name, the advertisement is as a listed donor mm -hmm. of that thousand dollars, I get two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. The other way, is I only get a thousand dollars in this revenue, and it's mm -hmm. separate. Okay. okay. So essentially, that's what it is. So, so can we send? Uh, can we direct administration to clarify that? And you that's all. Up. So all that we need. Yeah. Would you we prefer put a motion on the table to direct administration to send a letter? <coughs> okay. So I'll move to direct administration to send a letter uh, stating that uh, the advertising of just uh, have being recognized as a donor is sufficient to meet our. Criteria. To be a, uh, yeah, the time. <coughs> Maybe I would add, and, and if they see fit, is to advertise a town event or two in the next 12 months. That would be greatly appreciated. Completely unnecessary, but greatly appreciated. We can't really go there. Okay. Uh, I appreciate what you said. So we have a motion on a table to direct administration. All in favor? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. My goodness. Thank you. It's six o'clock. We are uh, going to deal careful of <laughs> with 4A, which is. It's not quite six o'clock. It's not six o'clock. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So let's do 7E. Yeah, right. The Economic Development Tourist Board uh, Bylaw Variants. Uh, what we need right here is a motion. Councillor Balfour, maybe you would want to do uh, put that motion forward is to accept to extend Andy Olson uh, term by 12 months. Right. There was uh, an additional one as well. Are we dealing with uh, the county? The county as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, the no, county is a different issue. Now. We do the camera stuff. Okay. Yeah. That back. All right. Yeah. So uh, I'll move that uh, we extend Andy Olson's. Term tenure on the Economic Development Board by 12 months. Thank you. Okay. okay. And the reasons are really clear in your packet. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Just, you Go know, ahead. As I thought about it, you know, the, the two concerns were, yeah, it would be nice if he could, you know, finish what he wanted. And the other, on the other hand, you know, does it set a, a precedent for other board members? And, exactly. and the question I was wanted to ask was that, is there any way he could? Uh, you know, give his services without necessarily sitting on the board. I mean, we in Communities in Blue have people who volunteer for projects and do projects that aren't necessarily on the board. And uh, I was wondering to satisfy both concerns. Is there is there a way that Andy could uh, uh, participate in those uh, those uh, initiatives that he was interested in without without actually being a board member? There, of, of course, there's a way. Uh, at the board, we discussed that. And uh, as a board, the, the decision was that we would like to have him sit on the board for another 12 months to get it completed. And Thank that's you. a recommendation from a board uh, coming to council. But, but Mayor's area is a bylaw in place that stipulates the term of, uh, of the board members. This is I, why we are... And I think we need to stick with that bylaw. Okay, so here we go. My this feeling, is why we're looking for are, bylaws. You, by, bylaws can be... Yeah, I understand that, but you can also extend. There's there's nothing wrong with extending somebody's position. And I, I have to take my own example. The library board also has, you know, they have terms of reference too. But there's also in the provincial statutes that say that 
if you so move to make a change, you're allowed to do that. I don't have a problem. I think Andy's doing a fine job, and uh, I have no problem at all extending his term for another year. I have no problem at all. I think he's doing a good job. I, I don't know. I, I think right now there are quite a few uh, members that uh, terms are due and, and that, it becomes and another issue for that board because they become very, very slim That's right. and that they do not have people that could step to the plate with the understanding, the knowledge the, uh, and the depth of knowledge and involvement as he has had with a college uh, with the Lesbridge College and with other uh, firms to move some economic project forward. So in that spirit, I would prefer that we extend him, although I am also one who like to respect the bylaws. But in that very, very sense, knowing and having sat on this committee, I would appreciate uh, what the board has tried to do. If I might, but one of the big concerns was is we have a lot of our, the percentage of the membership whose terms all come due at the, the same time. At the same time. Yeah. And we need to get that staggered and we didn't want to lose all of the history that we've continuity. done already. So there's no continuity there if we don't keep yeah. a few people there. Yeah. And so that was one of the big issues. So that's the reason why. So what happens in uh, next year when he, when he comes and he needs an extension? He doesn't get another done. There is no more that is done. Yeah. Well, he could, he could retire for a period of year and then come back yes. on. Sure. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely could. Okay. But this isn't a convenient no, sir, time to do Pete that. Boy? Yeah. So <laughs> just for clarification and then a quick question. For clarification, the committee itself has requested this yes. extension yeah. so that they can keep Andy in this position that they feel is best for the whole committee. For the, uh, so my question then is, are there any members whose times are expiring who are going to maybe resent that this extension was granted to Andy if they want to stay? I don't know. I, I don't people, know the they are the vote. They are those very members who are they made that. Vote, so, so the idea that the other people whose memberships are extending or are, are, are terminating right. were there. Right, right. They voted. For to this. For that. Yeah. And yeah, it looks like there's some that go on that, you know, they that finish two years and they, they yeah. can do it another two year term, right? All right. So. Yeah, a lot of the ones that are. Oh, they're the retired. These, these ones here, they're listed on your, your yeah. list there. Mm -hmm. They've done their four yeah. years. No, there's some. Uh, so, can I make so a motion? We have a motion on the floor. So, all in favor? Yeah. Thank you. All right. Is any opposed? Yeah, uh, yeah, any opposed? opposed? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Councillor Bankry. Thank yeah. you, Councillor. Uh, we now need to uh, adjourn to uh, public hearing. And so I need a motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn to public hearing. Councillor Bangri made the motion. And I would ask uh, Marian to come and to uh, give us the public hearing regarding bylaw 1606D, known as electricity distribution bylaw. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I'm here to present Bylaw 1606D, a bylaw of the Town of Carson in the Province of Alberta, to amend Bylaw 1606, the Electricity Distribution Bylaw, pursuant to the Municipal Government Act RSA 2000 M261, as amended, and pursuant to the Electric Utilities Act RSA 2000 C E35, as amended, and any regulations pertaining thereto and that these acts and regulations grant the municipality certain rights and powers concerning the ownership of electrical distribution systems and their uses. Where it is necessary to provide new rates, the Council of the Town of Cardston duly <coughs> assembled in acts as follows. That Schedule A, Distribution Tariff Rate Schedule, effective January 1, 2015, be included and form part of this bylaw. Madam Chairman, on that bylaw, the changes are noted, um, they have been advertised. Mm -hmm. uh, the effect of the bylaw is um, on a typical bill, just for presentation purposes. Um, on a typical monthly bill, using the whole electric portion, a residential um, using 600 kilowatt hours per month, 
would see a reduction of approximately 9.5%. Small commercial using approximately 700 kilowatt hours per month would see an approximate reduction of 9.9%. And medium commercial would see a uh, with use usage of 100,000 kilowatt hours. Um, 1,000. It's 100,000. No, that's, 100, okay. that's a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we don't have any money left. Yeah. Would see a reduction in the um, estimated amount of 10.65%. Um, as Council is aware, the reason for this bylaw amendment being put forward is that we have a transmission charge that comes to us from Fortis, Alberta that we pay in 2015. There was an application before the AUC to approve a rate increase effective January or July 1st, 2014. Um, we, sorry, did I say 15 previously? Yeah, 13. Yeah, well, talking budget. And, <laughs> <laughs> so to, to take effect July 1st, 2014. Um, that rate has not been approved to date, but our rates for 2014 included that estimated increased amount. So what we're proposing to do in this rate structure is amend our distribution uh, rates within the bylaw to an increase of approximately 5%, but with a reduction to a transmission rider, going from a 25% surcharge to a 38% credit. Um, so as I said, there is some evidence there to support that on a typical monthly bill there should see for the 2015 year uh, percentage decrease in the overall cost of that bill. Thank you Marian. In short what it just means is that council has chosen to approve uh, the transparency that uh, administration uh, has put forward regarding the different changes that occurred because some changes at the provincial level did not come forth and we are trying to recredit the uh, customer with a little bit of an adjustment in their monthly billing to their advantage. Essentially, that's a whole idea. So the customer will be beneficiating on, on, on average, in dollars and cents, what are we talking? Five dollars, three dollars a month? It varies. Uh, I know it varies, but um, I'm just saying I on apologize, average. I apologize, Councillor, because I don't yeah. have those in dollars. Essentially, well, what it is, right? because it's nine percent yeah. for uh, an average customer. So, if your bill was a hundred dollars on electric, we're nine talking dollars. nine dollars. Mm -hmm. More or less, yeah, percent. Right. Yeah, more or okay. less. And I just want to clarify, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, your proposal that they the average household will see a decrease is assuming that electrical rates stay where they're at and they don't increase. Uh, you know, for this right. year, the the energy, for this year, the energy 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 they won't. The energy side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I said, and that's using a typical bill. So yeah. there's going to be variances in that, but um, but it gives you the information. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Is uh, anybody in the gallery that want to? Address this regarding this issue. No, it's to your benefit. Mm -hmm. It's not every day that we are bearer of good news, but today <laughs> we are. Okay, so what we need in that sense, we need to have. We need to come out of public. We need to come out. Uh, no, we we need oh, to yeah. come out yeah. of. We need to reconvene into the regular meeting. Right. Councillor, move Andrew. to reconvene. Okay. So the Councillor P. Roy, and now we need yeah. to have a first. second and third reading. We need to just vote on the reconvening. Oh. Yeah, oh. all in favor? Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor yeah. okay. Creed, do you want to Yes, I will, I will, now that we have had our public hearing on bylaw uh, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, any questions? All in favor? Thank you. And I believe we could move for third reading, Councillor. I'll move third reading of bylaw 1606D, 
province of Alberta to amend the bylaw of the electrical distribution bylaw for the town of Cardston. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. All right. This is good. So Six the first ten. bill of January, I'm going to have a reduction on my bill, right? <laughs> Uh, we now have a delegation. We have Black Sands Management Group. If you like to move forward, gentlemen. Okay. We have Black Sands Management Group. Uh, Dean Sommerfeld is going to be the spokesperson. I'm not so sure who is the spokesperson today. Uh, uh, are you going to be the spokesperson? Dean, Dean is. Dean. Okay. All right, so what we're going to have is a report on, uh, from the management group regarding the uh, golf course and their season, last season. Are we ready? Sorry, I was kind of I'm totally ready. Come to Richard, you're If you're ready, we're ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor and Councillors. Appreciate the opportunity to come before you and talk to you a little bit about our Black Sands or about your golf course and our golf course. Um, I'm not sure exactly where to start and what we're talking about, but let me, let me give you a couple of uh, uh, facts. 2012 was our best year. That's when we took in our most revenue, was 2012. That was the hail year. And so we lost about three weeks of golf because of that, but uh, recovered and, and did our best year that year. Uh, that was 2012. 2013, our revenues was down $51,000, mostly due to weather. Um, we didn't make any changes. We didn't uh, change rates. We didn't change anything. We just lost $51,000. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Our revenues was down $51,000. 2014, this year, uh, we was down $53,000 in revenues. So in two years, we basically dropped a hundred thousand dollars in revenues. You mean to uh, tell me you should have had halo? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, we're uh, we're concerned, but the, our biggest concern is one that we have no control of, and it is a weather concern. And uh, and, and so, D Dean, you know. just to clarify, so it was the additional fifty-three thousand from twenty thirteen, or yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. So that's how we get to the basically one hundred and four thousand dollars down from twenty twelve. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it, it's a weather related industry that we're in, and when May and June, and this year we was in the middle of a flood in June, and we forget about that really quick, and and uh, people in July tell us, man, you guys must be just raking in the money because we had a great July, but when we lose a month of June, then it, we really can't pick it up. And uh, if, if we can accommodate uh, 100 golfers out there a day, um, and we lose a day in June, we don't have 200 in July. We just, it just doesn't work that way. It just, and so, so those revenues are down. We have then uh, gone to uh, figuring out how we can trim budget, how we can uh, uh, exercise some of our options to figure out what we can do to make this a viable operation. Um, we have some concerns. Um, we have some issues um, that we're worried about as a group. Um, we're worried about uh, the Gordon Atkins project. That affects our golf course. Uh, it affects a couple of tee boxes. At one point he wanted to take down a bathroom so he could make a road turn around in there. Um, we probably would have lost our bathroom uh, to a couple of porta potties if our electrical system hadn't been in there for all of our sprinklers. And so that bathroom <coughs> was easily moved as his bulldozers wanted to move it. And so, um, so it's still there, but what the plan is there, and we feel like we haven't really been caught up to speed fully on, we don't know what's really happening there. And, uh, and maybe you don't either, and maybe that's the problem, but, but we're concerned about that. There has been some issues with uh, 16, hole 16, hole 17. Uh, we're addressing those with Marion. Uh, the seismic people was over there again yesterday, and the hill has been sliding, but we're, we're still concerned. Uh, this was our fifth year, and it was slid before we took possession, and so we're there for a while. And, and so at the rate we're going, 
we're going to get a new old by 2035. You know, so it's, it's going to take some time, I guess. And, and uh, but we don't have a lot of time. Our lease doesn't doesn't last forever. There was some other flood damage. There's a tee box on 14 that uh, that got washed away somewhat, and, and I don't know what we do to rejuvenate that. Um, so we're just we we're we're doing okay. Um, when I say our revenues are down, we uh, that means that obviously our profits are down. We uh, we have spent uh, a lot of money on upgrading. We've uh, bought I don't know it was 30 new carts, I believe. Uh, a couple of years ago, we bought 30 carts. We bought 109 thousand dollars worth of machinery. We put up a 40 thousand dollar shed. Uh, tent, uh, storage area, entertainment center, whatever we wanted to call it. Um, we've done some paving. Uh, so we have met, to my knowledge, uh, all of our obligations to the town. We, we've met all of our payments. We've met all of the criteria that, uh, that we needed to meet. The contract changed a little bit this year. Um, we were supposed to do $10,000 worth of capital improvements. Uh, in the contract that dates that that will carry over, that we may be able to do that $10,000 worth of capital improvements on hole 16 when that hole gets started. <coughs> so next year we would owe you $20,000 worth of capital improvements if that hole gets started. If the hole doesn't get started next year, then we would owe you 20 the following year. It can't keep building. It doesn't go 20, 30, 40, 50. It maxes at the 20. And so we do owe you the 20000 next year if the hole gets uh, started, then we will send our men over there to do some, do some work on, on that hole with the contractor or whoever is building the hole. Some of that will be irrigation, some of it will be other things. Uh, that hole slipping has cost us more money again this year because as it slides, the irrigation pipes pull. And uh, we <coughs> compounded the problem by having broken water lines underneath the ground and and we've tried to shut water off whenever we can shut water off and water less uh, because of that. But there again, this spring, it slipped again because of the, the water that we have. Um, as far as memberships, memberships are basically status quo. As uh, uh, far as I know, the, the town is, the town's people are happy with the golf course. Uh, I don't see any issues with, with that part of it. Can I ask you a question? You bet. The picture you are painting is bleak. To say the least. And so I'm wondering, why would you as business people hang on to something that is so bleak? Keep that question. Mm -hmm. Is there any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a question just to help, you know, perspective. Um, you mentioned 2012 was your best year, and you mentioned this year was your fifth year, is that right? Yes. Is there any, uh, I hate to go back, way back, but is there any, do you have the numbers to show the difference, like 2011, 2010, uh, compared to 2012? Were they also 50,000, like did, did 2012 go up 50,000 from the previous year? In 2009, the town hired Vince Chinfani to run the golf course. The numbers that he had in 2009 was basically the same as we had in 2012. Vince's second year was basically the same as our 2014. So he lost the $100,000 in revenues in, his, in that two years that he was there. The first year that we took it over, um, we got back up to basically 2012 numbers. 2012 was slightly better, and then 13 was down, and 14 was down. So, uh, just to clarify, then 2011 was pretty close to 2012. After yes. 2010 being comparable to this current year. Yes. Okay. The most money that the town has ever seen in revenues in the golf course was 2007. The worst that I have, and I only go back to 2003, but 2004 was the very worst. But that was the major construction year. So the golf course was 
half close. Seven and a half holes type yeah. thing. And so it was <coughs> machinery going every direction. And so that, that 2007, you say, was the best year, even better than 2012? Yes. 2007, okay. Yes. Richard or Ben? Richard. Uh, Dean, what do you contribute the Atkins property is a detriment to the golf course. When I when I consider that I've been down Paradise Canyon for the last two weeks and see the housing down there that's going on down there, this is much similar. And there's golfers all through that housing in Paradise Canyons. I'm not sure it's a detriment to the golf course. If there was houses there and those if if there was thirty houses there, there's a good chance that 25 of those people may become members because they're living on a golf course. Right. I'm not sure that's the issue. I don't think we all, any of us have a problem with the houses being there. It's that some of it is changing our cart paths and where our tee boxes are and we don't know who's fixing that and who's doing that. We don't know what we need to do or we don't, we don't have any insight into what's going on with that. Okay. Just like I mean, basically, he came up to the clubhouse, and Dale can correct me if I'm wrong, but basically, he came up to the clubhouse and said, I'm going to tear the bathroom down today, and I'll bring in a couple of porta bodies. Mm -hmm. Dale said, You can't do that because all of our electrical is there, and we won't be able to run our sprinklers because they're all done through electronics. Then, so that stopped the project. But if we didn't have the electrical in there, he'd have bulldozed them and put two porta bodies. That's a detriment to us because if you're spending you and your wife fifty dollars to golf a piece. You really don't want to go to the bathroom in a porta potty when we had a nice bathroom there. So it's if the unknown is what we're worried about. Um, <clears throat> have you made a profit? That's a tough question. You mentioned your profits are down, but have you made a profit? Revenue. We have no cash. We haven't. We have lost money this year. The other years we have been able to go status quo. This year we have lost money, but not a substantial amount because we have bought uh, $40,000 worth of equipment this year. We had two lawnmowers we had to replace, so we bought $40,000 worth of equipment. If we don't buy that equipment, then we're really close to just a break-even point. But we have to go to the bank to have a loan to finish paying off our expenses for this year because of the more. So we have the assets there, mm -hmm. but we have no cash flow because we've had, we've had the assets. And so, uh, have we made money? Um, no, not this year. Okay, Councillor Green. Uh, Dean, uh, you know, when you, when you, you know, made the first, made the proposal to the council, you know, to, to, to take the lease, uh, you, you had the records of the revenues for the, from those previous years, I assume. Uh, so you had to base your, base your business plan on on a certain revenue that the, 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 the golf course would bring in. I'm just just curious as a, as a businessman, did you uh, you know uh, think pie in the sky and think you know base it on the highest year or did you base it on the average? I'm just wondering. I mean, you 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 know. I mean, and you knew going into this that the weather would affect the the golf course. So I'm just. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, I'm sympathetic to you, but, but the thing is that, is that you know, basing your, your business plan, uh, where did you base your revenues uh, when, you, uh, when you made that proposal? That was five years ago, and I don't remember what happened last week. Yeah. Let me tell you what I think <laughs> we did. We probably took that, that average, but I think the thing that got us into a little bit of trouble was as we approached the town, and as we had numbers, and as we put together what we classified as our business plan, we was not aware of as many hidden costs that we didn't foresee. We didn't know that there was, was it 10 or $15,000 worth of taxes that we would have to pay that the, down, the town didn't pay because we have to pay school tax and school tax is what we ended up with at that, right? Well, and I think that was not the first year. That wasn't the first couple of years, but that it has come on, on, on I think, board. I think it was in the contract. I mean, right. I guess you would have seen it. We, we seen it, but we didn't, but it didn't reflect in any of the town's numbers because they didn't ever have to pay it. Mm -hmm. We didn't see all of the accounting fees because payroll and uh, insurances and those kind of things was done through a blanket the, the town of Carson's checks for Vincent and Fanny was done 
through the office down here, but never did get billed to the town of Cardston or, or to the golf course. So there was there was hidden accounting fees and, and and the town doesn't pay the taxes, income taxes for any kind of money that that would be accumulated by our group. So we had to have accountants and we had to have some of those things. So there was more hidden costs than we thought. But yeah, we did we do okay? Yeah, we didn't lose two hundred thousand dollars like the town did the first year that yeah. we took over because we stopped some of the bleeding and some of the um, expenses. But there was still some hidden costs that we didn't anticipate, and, and, some, and some of them wasn't. Some of them just wasn't in the town. We we ended up buying a new lawnmower because the lawnmower that we was using, and we knew this up front, but the lawnmower that we was used that the town was using ended up going to the soccer field, we had to replace that lawnmower for 49000 so we had to buy $100,000 worth of machinery that first year um, just because the one left, and, and we knew it was leaving, it's not like they come and took it at night or anything, so I'm not blaming that, but we knew it was going, so, so there was some hidden cost, but, but yeah, we based our numbers on, on these numbers, and we didn't base it on what 2014's number was. 2014's number is as low as it had been since 2005. Okay. So, so, would you like to answer the question up close? Yes, but I think we need to, if, if there's no more questions, I think we probably need to stop our this part of the discussion and we probably need to go to in camera so I can tell you kind of where we're at. As far as the contract as discussion? As far as contract discussion and to answer your question. If it's part of the okay. contract, it should be discussed in camera. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. question, the question, question I have to administration, when we talk about the Gordon Atkins pro, uh, project down there, we have control over that, uh, the boundaries, do we not? The boundaries have been defined, but there's very clearly outlined responsibilities in the development agreement and simply tearing down the bathroom mm -hmm. was not part of the agreement no. either. So they may not. It, it's well then we then we need to be with that party and get those stipulations which very straight. Have, and, which we have. Uh, good. All right. So are there any more questions regarding the annual report? The annual report? Dean, I have one more question. You you got you uh, You've done a lot of assets, uh, purchased a lot of assets, uh, golf carts, s'mores, so forth. What do you see as major purchases in the next year to two years? Uh, more golf carts, because golf carts wear out fairly regularly. So as we need to buy 10 more golf carts, we pension off five or six of the worst ones. We can sometimes sell those to in different individuals for five or six hundred dollars to to recoup some of that money. Golf carts would probably be one of our major expenses. And then at some point there will probably be a couple, three lawnmowers that need to be replaced. So so to give you a catch back up to speed just where we're kind of at, um, we've been in the contract five years. We owe you 263, I didn't write that number down, 260,000 dollars, 250,000? 260. 260. We owe you that much in lawnmowers, uh, sprinkler heads, crescent wrenches, we owe you that much back at, at the end of the 10 years. If we don't keep that uh, fleet of golf carts and lawnmowers current, then we would be in trouble at the end of our lease. So there would be, we would have to upgrade some of the machinery um, and, and turn it over so that it's newer because the other stuff will have wore out and be depreciated out. So there will be some more expenses coming in, and there always will be. No, you're, you're still allowing private use of carts. Yes. And are you charging a, a trail fee? Uh, we charge a trail fee for members, yes. They, they pay us a storage fee for in the shed, and then they pay a trail fee for the season. Um, and if somebody brings a cart in from McGrath and they want to golf the day, then there's a day trail fee for those. And then there's uh, then they rent the carts from us, and, okay. and we actually do fairly well renting carts um, to the to the publishers. Okay, uh, one more question. That's one more. Oh. Questioning on, on the revenues again. Uh, as now you mentioned that the, the you know that the, your membership is fairly consistent. That, you know, consistent over the, over the years. So, yeah, pretty close. So those so those are 
people in the, in the, the that's a one time, that's a, like like a season pass, so the yes. weather wouldn't affect. The weather doesn't affect that. Doesn't affect, no. affect that. So that, in fact, that, once we get all their money, we don't care if it rains the rest of the year for them. Yeah, because okay. Because we got their money, right? Right. Uh, we want that to happen, but yes. Yeah, sir. and that and that is kind of what what percentage of your total revenues and the you know the you know the the, the fixed ones that you're getting. I mean, I'm just trying to think what what you're losing is from from out of town, right? One third. So it's about a third is what your, is your your uh, seasonal. I mean your 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 memberships. Yeah. And then because uh, uh, you know you know initially you know you talked a little bit about your marketing plan and you know how you plan to attract people. I'm uh, wondering has that has that worked out according to your initial expectations as far as uh, your your marketing that you you know that you planned out or is, is there something else that you could be doing? Uh, there, there probably is other things that we could do. Um, there might be other things that we don't do because of the time constraint. Mm -hmm. um, I still have a business to run and a couple of guys think they need to teach school once in a while. And, and so there is other things that, uh, that get in the way of some of that marketing. I think we've done fairly well in marketing. The, the problem is you can market till you're blue in the face. If it's raining out there today, nobody's coming. Mm -hmm. And so if we spend a thousand dollars on a radio ad for the week and it rains all the next week and wipes out our Mother's Day promotion, it really doesn't matter what we said or how much. The only way we could have gotten there is if we'd have paid them five dollars to show up because they're not showing up if it's raining. Yeah. The other problem that's a little bit of a concern of ours is, is that we are a ways away from the bigger center, Lethbridge. Um, it, as gas gets to a dollar twenty-five a liter, we start to see our numbers drop off a little bit. They will stop at McGrath. They will stay at Henderson, or they'll be in Tabor, or they'll go to uh, Pitcher Butte. They'll they'll sometimes go closer um, because of gas prices, and so we see that happening as well. Um, if you recall, last year we talked about re some revenue streams, and you were protesting and asking us about liquor event licenses. Mm -hmm. Have you guys followed up on that or doing it at that at all? Because you we were talking about bringing in other revenue. We haven't entertained that avenue yet this year. That probably will come. Uh, last year we had some liquor permits for some of the special, you know, the, the events that we had, some of the tournaments and that. That that does a that does a slow process. Uh, there's not tons, and, and and there is there is tons of revenues to be had from the liquor. The problem is it's the consistency of we don't attract some of the tournaments that we could because they don't realize or we're in a dry town, let's not even ask Hartston if they can put on a tournament for us. And so we might not attract the Oilman's Club out of Calgary because they don't want to come down here because they don't, yeah. so, so we don't get the phone call, but we don't know to call them either because we don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. And so, so it's, it's that part of it. Um, I think somewhere along the line of all of the liquor debates, I said if, to one individual, I said if we could take all of the revenues from the liquor sales and donate them back to the gymnastics club and the figure skating club, we would take all the revenues from the alcohol sales to do that. We want more green fee players. We want more golfers. Yeah. And uh, that's what, we're going to make money with golfers, not selling hot dogs, not selling beer. That all helps. But that's not where our money or our our venture is. Our venture is to sell grass so that they can golf. Okay, Councillor Bangbang. Dean, have you beat the bushes on corporate involvement? Some, and I don't know if we beat the bushes as well as somebody might. But corporate involvement is it is a tough thing to entertain sometimes. But yeah, we. I'm thinking, I'm thinking on the lines of a, of a clubhouse replacement that would enhance your facility, uh, extremely enhance your facility, if you could get a corporate uh, involvement on that. Um, and, and we've looked into that, you know, as somebody said, uh, why don't we go to the Calgary Flames and tell them they can have free golf every time they come, just build us a $3 million golf course <laughs> for the and every other Saturday we can let them golf, or, but in all reality, is that really going to happen? I, I don't know. I, I don't think so. But but it could. But yet it's known as a very good design golf course. The so best one in Alberta. Right. Maybe yeah. the best one in Alberta. So, 
That's um, I mean, when a tool that golf course, I was re rather amazed at the beauty mm -hmm. of that golf course and the challenges that and, it and offers for a golfer. And there's no question that our golf course the last few years, and especially this year, one of the comments that we get is, is that it, it's in the best shape that it's ever been in. Uh, the grass is great, the greens are great. I mean, it's that's not an issue by any means, is, is the quality of the golf course. The quality of the golf course is better than it's ever been, and it's, how can it not be good when it rains all the month? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's going to grow. I mean, but that's <laughs> the truth for all the golf courses. Yeah. If you suffer, and it rains all around us, others suffer too. Exactly. Yep. Be it in Madras, Raymond, or mm -hmm. Sterling, or whatever. And, and as we've talked with some of the other golf courses, their numbers are quite similar to ours. They're, so. they're not doing any better than we are, I think. It's not right. that we're doing anything wrong, it's just that there's a circumstance there. Yeah. Okay, so if there's no more questions, thank you very much. We will... Uh, have to decide like how like we deal with the rest of our Probably issues. Yes, yes. Man, yeah, I, I think um, the group would like to talk a bit about their contract tonight. Mm -hmm. um, we weren't sure originally, but it, it appears that they would. So what I would suggest is can we quickly finish the balance of the agenda I would prior to going that. down? Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. Don't yeah. Waiting so if you don't mind giving us add. another 10 minutes or so, yeah. Maybe less? <laughs> okay, yeah. No, I think okay. it says in camera so as needed. Yeah. We, Does it say? we need to look at the community and others re other reports. Uh, you have the town council motion list. Any questions regarding that list? No, fine. 9B, you have the council committee report. I have one uh, question for Councillor Barnes. Councillor Barnes, I realize that uh, your uh, library board has decided to give Christmas bonuses to the employee, and uh, it's great. Mm -hmm. The only thing I am wondering is that your manager is also getting a, a Christmas bonus from the town, so are you aware of it? No, I wasn't aware of that. All right, so um, Donna gets <coughs> has a two hundred dollar Christmas bonus from the library board, mm -hmm. and then seventy five dollar from the <coughs> town. So to me, it looks like a double dipping. So should the the bonus just come from the from the library board? I don't, I don't need to mention that. that. I mean, Mayor, should we be mentioning figures? I don't have a problem with that at all. Well, just what have you done in the past? Has she been getting a bonus from the town? Pardon me? I didn't hear what you said. Has, has Donna been getting a bonus from the town previous? Uh, yes, we have. Every year? I, I wasn't aware of that. It was never brought up. So it's the first time I I just that. noticed that as I read Yeah, well, that's, your that's, a, that's a good point. And, and I think if the library board is providing that bonus, I don't think the town needs to be in addition to. I think it's, it's so fair. So because maybe we lo should looking do, at we need to do that by motion or? Uh, no, I think Marian, just or by direction. Just recommendation? Direction to administration. Yeah, I, I think then we should recommend that, that she just yeah. get the bonus from the, the library board and, and uh, not from the town as okay, well. Thank Leave you. It that. All right. Thank you. Uh, Councillor, could you want to talk yeah. about ISO? I can, I can give you just I'll use the, I'll use the blackboard here because they did. Uh, can you move to the other So what uh, we had a meeting at one o'clock with uh, uh, two uh, gentlemen from uh, ISO and one from AlphaLink, uh, John uh, Grove from AlphaLink. I know some of you remember that he was here before when they were. Uh, proposing the, the transmission line from a Goose Lake to Hatsukam Cooley. And uh, anyway, the, the long and short of it is that, is that they, these, these lines were proposed. Some, this one has already been built. This is from Brooks to Medicine Hat. And then these are ones that were proposed from, uh, I can't remember what that place is, Whitlaw. Uh, this was Lethbridge. Anyway, this is the one that they did. That's that picture view. Picture view. Yeah, the picture view. Yeah, this is picture view. Picture view. That's Kankuli, and this and was over by Picture Creek, and they had this line coming around here. 
uh, basically what he said is when, when, when these lines were proposed and they went to the AUC for the proposal, there was a lot of uh, interest in wind farms all through this area. We have, we have a lot of wind in this area, but the, you know, the, wind, hasn't, the wind hasn't quit. We still have wind, but the, the economic uh, interests, you know, for various reasons in, in, uh, in uh, building wind farms has declined. And so when they reviewed it, they said that, that, you know, that the economic landscape has changed and they reviewed this project and uh, uh, Alto Link was given uh, uh, instruction or direction from uh, yes. ISO, the Alberta Electric System Operator, who determined that, that uh, board, the ISO, the electric, Alberta Electric uh, System Operator, their, their job, their mandate is to determine where transmission lines are needed in the province. Uh, yeah, and they, they, they plan, they do all of the planning and then they, they're approved by the Alberta Utilities Commission and then, and then if they determine a line is necessary then they direct uh, whichever company, which whether it's uh, Altalink or ATCO, uh, what, whoever's area that's in to, to construct those lines. So several years ago, I'll just get you just a minute, yep. several years ago, or well actually it wasn't several years ago, it's just been about a year ago, that uh, they, were, they were planning on this line, but like I said, because the economic climate changed, all of these wind farms that were planned for this area have kind of dried up, that you know, the, the, the people have decided for, not because we don't have wind, but because of the economic viability, uh, you know, whether it's subsidies that aren't there anymore, anyway, that, that, that there's no longer the, the interest in building the wind farm, so uh, uh, ISO instructed Alta Link to, uh, uh, drop this project for the for the present time. So so this this basically has been taken off. And what uh, uh, John Grove explained is that because property owners, if if they are to sell their property, and if there's a proposed uh, transmission line going across their property, they are obligated to tell the buyer that there's a proposed transmission line across the property. And since this this has been taken off now the table for you know at least three years or more. Uh, uh, John Grove said that their their uh, plan or what they what they need to do is take the, take it off the map, so that these so that somebody owning property isn't obligated now to say there's a proposed transmission line across our property because it's been it's been scrubbed for the present time. It may come back in in a few years, but for right now, this 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 line is. Uh, no longer proposed. This is no longer proposed line. Okay, Richard. I wish I would have been at that meeting because there's there's 20 towers turbines down at McGrath. Mm -hmm. When they were built, they were told that the lines are not heavy enough to carry the power that those turbines are going to generate. Now they're still putting towers up out, out of Pincher Creek and that wind farm yeah. because they have the transmission lines. Mm -hmm. So who's copying out on this? So uh, I, I, I guess we could give you, the, you know, the, the, the contact. We've got the business cards for, uh, for uh, yeah. the people that were here, and, you, and you, know, you could direct those questions to them. But apparently the, you know, the ISO has determined that, that those lines, they do have to provide uh, transmission for any, anybody that wants to generate electricity. They have to be able to provide. So um, you know, my thoughts is that they must be able to provide for the people that have have built uh, generating capacity through wind at this point. Uh, but they've determined that the, the long-term need for the you know the, the the line that they were going to build uh, is no longer viable or necessary. So time. we're going to continue to pollute the atmosphere with coal burning uh, power generation. Not, not necessarily. <laughs> that, that already so exists. <laughs> If you are Excellent. interested in having Altaling or Esokar to the council, right yeah. they, did, uh, they, they are willing to come and speak to all of us. Yeah. They, they did say that, that basically Alberta produces enough enough for the province. We we, we, we import uh, electricity from British Columbia. We import more than we export, but it's more of an economic thing because we we import it at uh, at night when. The, or is it the other way around? We import it during the day. Oh, we, we sell it, it at yeah, night. Yeah, we sell it at night. Mm -hmm. uh, so, 
actually we import the higher higher price power and they sell yeah. the lower price power so we, we don't it's not a great deal for us but uh, we don't have a lot of extra capacity generating capacity to export all over we basically meet our own uh, needs, needs here in Alberta so thank, you. Yeah, thank you uh, thank you very much the CA report is there uh, any question uh, for Marion regarding the CA report Okay, thank you very much. So, um, on the 10, I just want to make you aware of a proposal that has come our way. Uh, the fire chief, Danny Smith, has contacted Marion regarding the Christmas uh, staff party, and they are asking if council will be, uh, would approve of them joining with all staff Christmas party and share that with them. Madam so, Chairman, go ahead. just for clarification, I've already invited them. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, at this time, we, so at this time, the time. thank you. Well, at this time, so it's a piece of information for you. All. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, and just for your uh, information, the Reef has been uh, invited and the board has been invited. Okay. I'll be in Lethbridge at another meeting. I'll be in Lethbridge at another meeting. The board of the fire. Oh, the fire. Yeah. Yeah. So All right. But you I will be eating that night. I'm at Chinook Arch meeting that night. <laughs> Thank you. And I will be eating. I won't be eating that night. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> okay. If you look on the 11th, we have two <coughs> items of information that came uh, our way. The first one is a company that is interested in uh, helping municipalities with uh, fund reclamations and for floods, etc. And the other one is the Alberta Emergency Management Agency to let us know that we are indeed part of the uh, towns that have been earmarked for support uh, recovery. Of flooding, we'll but we do not know <laughs> how much and we don't know what. Marion has to meet with the Alberta um, people regarding the recovery next Tuesday. Tuesday. Next Tuesday, yeah. Marion, with this letter, or Madam Mayor, with this letter from the uh, the uh, HW Multi Management Limited, is our uh, administration feel that they need their services? Uh, I, I don't think so. Matters. Anybody who does that does it for a fee, and we can say the fee. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. If we Legal don't have That's any camera. more That's regarding okay. that, we are in need of. Uh, what about your? Do, do we, we need to talk about the committee to the, uh, to the agenda there for the no. rest of for the in camera? For the in camera. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Is that That's all in camera. No, it's all in camera. As we, all as of the committees and blooms in camera too? Yeah, yeah. So all, all okay. those things are, yes. All right. I, just, when, yeah. I mean, I agree. cautions is about discussing okay. things in camera that um, are on the agenda. So the the, the, the only, the only item is a black sand. Do we want to put a motion to add that as in camera? That's what Please. I've never That's, That's right. As long as we add black sands to the in camera. Thank yeah. you. Uh, if I could just amend that. Because they're here, could we bump them up to A and Absolutely. everything else down there? Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll make a motion that we go in camp. Well, oh. you got to vote on that. Yeah, your motion. We'll vote on that. Motion. All in favor? Oh, yeah. Thank you. I'll make a motion. Okay, to go in do camera. you need to take a recess for yeah. the yeah. recess? So first. we need to. You know recess. I do. Yeah, that's hold on a roll. second. We need to. I'm an old man. To recess. I move that we recess oh, for five, five minutes. minutes and then. Thanks, uh, we Then we're going to. Yeah, well, then we'll do a reason.